Narratio. This part follows the exordium, often blending in with it and extending it with examples and facts. The narratio is designed to bring your audience up to speed, to give them the ground of knowledge that will allow them to understand your claim. The narratio should not be lengthy. Reserve longer examples and facts for your argumentative proofs. Writers often choose to seem objective or even handed in this section rather than openly biased. Sometimes speakers use the narratio to remind readers of certain commonly held values. For best results, the narratio should be crafted so that it flows from the exordium and ends logically with a partitio. In this example, consider how Justice Scalia catches his audience up to speed by defining globalization. I think uh, we have to begin our consideration of this topic, globalization and the law, uh, by defining terms. The term globalization is, is invoked to describe nearly everything taking place in the world today, from the pro proliferation of the internet uh, to the fall of communism, from NAFTA, the, the North American Free Trade Agreement, to the war in Iraq. Indeed, the meaning of globalization is often in the eye of the beholder and can evoke a range of emotions from hope and pride to fear and disgust. Globalization is simultaneously adored and abhorred by groups spanning the political spectrum. The difference between adoration and abhorrence often turns upon what the term is taken to mean. Does it describe, for example, the rise of a world in which respect for human rights is universal? Or does it describe the rise of open markets and free trade which may produce a McDonald's on every corner in Shangri-La? The American left traditionally supports globalization when it means imposing their view of proper social policy on the world. Human rights, environmental protection, protection for organized labor, separation of church and state. The American right, on the other hand, supports globalization when it means imposing their view of proper economic policy on the world. Free trade, intellectual property protection, privatization. And while each side accuses the other of imposing its values on the world while ignoring the wishes of local populations and the cultural differences between nations, neither side seems willing to concede that its own preferred policies suffer from the same democracy deficit as the others. In my remarks today, I will use the term globalization to mean both these things, global harmonization of social policies, which I shall call cultural globalization, and global melding of economies, which I shall call commercial globalization. Partitio. This is what you would normally call the thesis, but this is a little different. The partitio makes a promise to the reader, basically saying, I will convince you of such and such a claim, and I will do it in the following ways. Think of a good partitio as a map for your reader, clearly declaring the destination and the major landmarks along the way. That is basically declaring the thesis and also all the points that you plan to address. A brief, direct, and reasonably complete partitio will be no longer than a couple of sentences in the case of a short argument, but it can be slightly longer if the speaker chooses to include short examples or reasons for each part of their argument. Let's consider two examples of partitio. First, consider how Hillary Clinton, then First Lady of the United States, addressed human rights in a speech delivered in China in the 1990s. She builds to her thesis, which is women's rights are human rights, through an organized progression of subclaims each of which she will address in greater detail. Even today, there are those who are trying to silence our words. But the voices of this conference and of the women at Wairo must be heard loudly and clearly. It is a violation of human rights when babies are denied food or drowned or suffocated or their spines broken simply because they are born girls. It is a violation of human rights 
when women and girls are sold into the slavery of prostitution for human greed and the kinds of reasons that are used to justify this practice should no longer be tolerated. It is a violation of human rights when women are doused with gasoline, set on fire, and burned to death because their marriage dowries are deemed too small. It is a violation of human rights when individual women are raped in their own communities and when thousands of women are subjected to rape as a tactic or prize of war. It is a violation of human rights when a leading cause of death worldwide among women ages 14 to 44 is the violence they are subjected to in their own homes by their own relatives. It is a violation of human rights when young girls are brutalized by the painful and degrading practice of genital mutilation. It is a violation of human rights when women are denied the right to plan their own families, and that includes being forced to have abortions or being sterilized against their will. If there is one message that echoes forth from this conference, let it be that human rights are women's rights and women's rights are human rights once and for all.